1200 true damage and half the damage near i don't know what not a wolf means what does not a wolf mean okay so th this what is not a wolf jungle pet collect ember stacks over time or by killing monsters up to oh feral flare ah! oh no it's not feral flare i mean so this is this is more for power farmers right no ls it isn't and i don't even blame you there's so much going on with this new season patch, and a lot of it has either been worded poorly or straight up wrong. So everyone reacting to this based on just text is fully justified for being a bit confused about what's going on. Today's video is sponsored by Opera GX. Opera GX is a highly customizable gaming browser that you've seen me talk about before on this channel. Look at how much you can do with it. You can activate dark mode on any page to get rid of the eye melting light mode. You can control how much of your PC is being used up, which is great in the case that you're still using Windows 98 on your grandpa's off-white gateway 2000. Yo, just saying. I used to smurf on Trophy Bass 2 back in the day. You can also activate animated wallpapers which will run smoothly in the background and now they've released new custom GX profiles that way you can tune your browser to work smarter and better for you. If you enjoy streaming you can make a custom browser just for that which will hide all of your personal information. If you need just one to two tabs open because you're working or you're doing something for school and not doing anything crazy why not make a lightweight profile that cuts down on processing power and keeps your PC running smooth. Stay up to date with new game releases, sales, and all gaming news in the GX corner for the ultimate gaming browser. Custom colors, custom performance, custom dark mode, it's all up to you. In fact, just about the only thing that's not custom with Opera GX is the fun, because with Opera GX, the fun is guaranteed. Okay, uh, sorry, that's, that's like really, really bad. You can download Opera GX today using my link in the description down below. It's my go-to browser that I'm using every day on a daily basis, and you should do the same. If you want to be cool like me, use Opera GX and use my link in the description down below. Thank you, Opera, for the sponsor. Thankfully for all of you, I've been awake for the last several days straight up not sleeping playing the PBE, so you don't have to. I'm here to break it down and give you the best and most comprehensive analysis that I possibly can as someone who plays jungle. Jungle is my secondary role next to mid, so of course I was a bit skeptical at first, but willing to give it a chance. I just wanted to try the Nidalee clear, but then got sucked into such a rabbit hole that I ended up testing 35 different clears, and it really got me thinking. Why is it that this role is the one that always has to be changed? And it's an important topic as well, because we know now that the jungle is in fact the least played role. It's a role that's seen amazing players like Canyon completely smurf their way to rank 1 Korea. We saw Tian stomp the world finals on his way to an MVP. It's also the role that the community hates to play the most? And why would giving them pets solve any of that? Let's find out. Several weeks ago, the devs gave us some thoughts on jungle and why they want to change it. They say that they don't want to make jungle easier to master, they still want the role to take a lot of skill and master at the highest level, but they say that their intention is to make it easier to enter. Right now in League, it's not realistic to expect a ton of different characters to be viable at the highest levels of play, because a lot of them simply can't optimize their clears well enough to stand up with the rest. And that's a very important point. When I read this for the first time, I immediately thought of two big questions. Number one, does this mean that they want to normalize clear speeds? Should junglers all be able to clear at right around the same pace? And if so, that might make certain junglers with typically slow clears more competitive, but what about those with a strong clear? What would be the reason you would pick a fast clearing jungler if a scaling jungler isn't really worried about invades or losing pace? The other big question that I had is, when they say barrier to entry, what exactly could they do? A lower barrier to entry is generally a good idea in video games, but as long as you don't remove the skill that makes someone good at something. And how are they going to do that? Their idea is to change how monsters work, but right now, this is one of the main things that junglers have to practice. Clearing itself is a way to prove skill. Low MMR and high MMR players on one champ don't clear the exact same way. Take Diana, she's a champ known for her clear speed, but utilizing that speed isn't just about pressing your abilities whenever they're off cooldown. It's a matter of how you use them and knowing the leash range. You can throw a Q from Raptors to Red, hitting both camps. Diana has two AoE abilities in her passive, which means you can do Blue and Gromp together effectively. She can also throw a Q from Red to Krugs rather than walking all the way around, and you can QE the Wolves from over this wall. 
All of this applies to her, but that's just Diana because every champion has their own way of clearing efficiently, some more complex than others. Learning how to clear as Nidalee is leaps and bounds more difficult than learning a Mumus. And then there's also the jungle burn. The buff camps, red and blue, don't die to the burn. It will be left on 1 HP, and knowing that is important. You can save time by paying attention to how much your autos do. In this example, as Lee Sin, my right click is doing about 65 damage, so once the buff is getting low, I should let the burn tick it down below that amount and walk to my next camp and not immediately auto attack. If it then ticks below 65 due to the burn, since that's what my auto does, it will finish it off. If you don't let it burn past that point, you'll end up wasting some extra time because you don't need that extra auto. Mastering the patience is another way that junglers show skill, and this can be a gatekeeping factor that keeps lower ranked junglers out of higher elos. It's not as if some high level junglers can do this, it's that all can. It is a requirement. Otherwise, the other jungler will always be to the play several seconds before you do, which adds up to minutes over the course of an entire game. You cannot afford to be behind the pace of the game, so being comfortable with pulling the camps and letting them die to the burn is extremely important. Regardless of your opinion of Tarzan and Nightblue, this clip still demonstrates perfectly why every second counts. Smarter to see if Jarvan's actually in the bush first, beside, instead of eating no, first. No, I have the fastest level 3 in the game compared to you. Rex has no, the fastest level 3 dude. than Jarvan. No, I... Going? You're passing red crux to blue. What time is blue. it? 2.36. Let me see what I'm... Yeah, so there's no way you can get level 3 faster than me. But if I take that extra route of extra second getting there... Yeah, I'm saying 2.36. Okay, so you're yeah, like I mean, two or three seconds right. faster. Right here, exactly. right here. No, so right. You, you really played off the two, three seconds faster? I know, yeah. dude, I'm the best one with the world, what do you think? The same concept can be applied to cycling. Cycling isn't necessarily a universal league term that all players know, but junglers would know what I mean when I say cycling. Here's the skinny on how cycling works. The buffs take a full 5 minutes to respawn, whereas your other 4 camps take 2 minutes and 15 seconds. So what this means is that junglers would really like to get their minor camps, Gromp, Wolves, Raptors, and Krugs, to respawn in sync with each other. An ideal game start would look something like this. You do a full 6 camp clear before 3 minutes and 15 seconds when the Scuttle Crab spawns. You kill all 6 camps, which means you get level 4, and you can use that level advantage to secure the crab. You could then pull off a quick gank, maybe get a kill, and recall to stay up tempo. When I say this is ideal, I mean it's absolutely perfect. You can then go back to the side of the jungle that you started on, so if you started your blue quadrant, you can take Gromp into Wolves, just as you did the first time. Because you're going in the same cycle that you did last time, your camps will respawn in the order that you cleared them, allowing you to collect them again, maybe look for a repeat gank on the laner who probably has no flash after the first gank, secure a deep ward, maybe get another recall off, and then repeat the cycle again. In addition, if you make sure to always clear your camps, you're going to get as much XP as possible. The camps will always give the same gold, but the amount of XP it gives is dependent on the camp's level. Let's imagine that you didn't clear your Krugs on your first several clears because they take a while. It means that the camp will stay stuck at level 1 until you or somebody else clears it. It's crucial to make sure that you don't leave camp sitting up for a long time, because being able to constantly farm in your cycle, gank, then repeat the cycle, feels amazing as a jungler. You're going to be up in level you're going to be up in CS, it feels great and you're going to come out of the jungle extremely farmed and strong. It's going to be a jungle diff, well except for the fact that here's the problem, I just explained why cycling is good, yet if you watch any high level jungle replay and stream, seldom does this actually happen. Very rarely will the challenger jungler just auto path their perfect cycle. Only about half the time they're going to even do a full 6 camp clear. Why? The big issue is that there's no way that this perfect scenario can happen every game, and that's for several reasons. Number one, not all junglers can even full clear before the crab at 315. Only a handful of junglers, most notably champions like Diana, Karthus, Nidalee, Udyr, and Hecarim can, but not too many others. No matter how good of a leash you get as Lee Sin, it's impossible. You cannot 6 camp clear before 315. So fighting for crab as Lee Sin means you're probably going to be down a level. Even more importantly, another the reason why you might not be able to get this start is that sometimes you need to cover a dive. You might get invaded. Your laners could die solo, meaning there's no real gank opportunity. You could lose both crabs. You could waste time sitting in a warded bush. There's so much that goes on during the early game to not get a start like this, and some of it is completely just dependent on which champion you picked. This is why, above all else, above everything from clearing, champion mastery, and late game macro, the absolute most important thing you need to do as a jungler is have the ability to adapt. A good 
jungler arguably has the most game knowledge of any role, but particularly the early game. A jungler might not have to worry about having insane viper level ADC mechanics, but you probably have to be a lot smarter than your ADC. You need to be able to adapt to the game state in the situation. A good jungler knows that Renekton is an early game champion who should have push priority against melee matchups. In the LPL, Tian was the top jungler in the summer split. Something that truly set him apart from the competition was creative pathing, because very often he would look for level 3 and start making things happen. He would look for ganks, he would look for dives, help his laners push. It was a rarity to see that Tian would just autopilot his 6 camp clear. He was okay to go down a level or two compared to the enemy jungler, because by getting his laners ahead, that gives all of them the priority to move to objectives, steal camps from the enemy side of the map, push lanes with his team so he can soak some experience. Being down levels in the first 5 minutes doesn't mean that you will be permanently down for the rest of the game. This. This is the hardest part about being a jungler. Not the leash mechanics, not the patience, not the burn, not even getting flamed by your teammates despite the times when you're doing well. It's because the jungle role is the one that requires the most amount of game knowledge about the first 15 minutes of the game. It's hard to know what to do, and you are always the brunt of the blame. The highest rated jungler in China proves my point. We talked about cycling and making sure that you don't leave camps up, but I guess you can just totally forget that. He goes red, blue, gromp, gets his quick level 3, then looks for a topside invade because he knows that he has the pushing top lane matchup with Renekton and has a huge dive threat. He spots the Zin Zhao, which if Zin was any slower at all with his clear, he could have died or lost his red. He then sits in the bush, waits a while, goes back to get the crab, goes back to the same bush, waits again, successfully ganks Camille, helps Renekton shove, doesn't go back top, doesn't cycle at all, waits in the bot bush, fights Zin Zhao while being down a level, gets an assist, and dies. I know you're thinking to yourself, this is the number one jungler on the super server? Yeah, it is. And even though he leaves wolves up and has some weird pathing, even though he makes choices that you and I wouldn't have done in the same situation, never follows cycling rules, and Xin Zhao got a lead early, he still ends up carrying this exact game with 17 kills. He only has 30 to 40 CS at the 10 minute mark, times where a Graves jungle can have 70 to 80, and at one point Xin is up two levels on him. You would think that this game is GG. But because he's always looking for plays, because he never prioritizes cross-map farming over fighting, at the 15 minute mark, he essentially walks right into a triple kill. It was an amazing play. And by the way, his blue and wolves were up during this. How many of you would think to yourself after recalling you should just go get your blue because it's up, rather than think a minute ahead, go towards the bot side of the map, recall and look at the lane state and realize your bot lane is going to die. It's his ability to read the map, with the game knowledge to know what to do. If all of this sounds overwhelming, that's because it is, and Riot thinks so too. Here's what they had to say about jungle. Jungle is a powerful role, but also the punching bag of the team. We're supposed to gank every lane, control all the macro, perfectly farm our camps, and set up vision all at once, and it's a lot. We don't want the majority of players to actively avoid playing any role, and the truth is we failed at that metric when it comes to jungling. Many League players see the wildly complex set of strategies and game knowledge required to even be slightly competent at the jungle role, and are scared away. We want to lessen this barrier to entry, one of the ways we'll do that is by easing players in, showing them how to play the role and adjusting mechanics so they're less punishing and more intuitive. The goal here is to absolutely not dumb down the jungle or remove the ability to show off your jungle knowledge, but to make sure the jungle is complex in the right places. All of this prompted Riot to change the jungle for 2023. When applicable, I will show a direct compare and contrast for certain systems, talking about what the current versus the new system is in preseason to keep it easy to understand. First off, recommended jungle pathing. It's a number system with the starting camp marked in the map. In this example, they have the path marked as a standard full clear from bot to top with a red buff start. The way these are determined is by, quote, gathering data from high skilled junglers on their high mastery champions across the globe. Pathing recommendations are based on which routes most often led to these players getting a victory and will be updated with each patch. I don't necessarily want to start off as a negative Nancy, but I believe this is the least constructive change of the preseason. It's nice to know if you're not sure, but I also find this dangerous as it might set in some bad habits. By strictly telling a lower ranked or new jungler this is the path, not only does it set in their mind that this is exactly what they should do, but it doesn't take into account fast level 3 ganks. It doesn't take into account which lanes have good gank setup or which lanes have priority. While it might be true that you probably should start topside on Elise, 
What if your top laner is Renekton, just like we talked about? My next question is, what about the fastest level 3 path in the game for a champion like Graves, which is Red Raptors into Gromp? While it's true that Graves is historically a full clear type of jungler, you can absolutely look for a very quick level 3 gank by doing this path, and is the system going to show this on the map? And if it does, isn't that more confusing for a new jungler? You wouldn't understand why you would clear out of order like this. Why would you leave up your Wolves and Krugs? It's because what's not abundantly clear to new junglers is that not all camps give the same amount of experience. The response from Riot could be that this is just a suggestion. It's not set in stone. And yeah, that's true, but isn't everything in the game like that? I mean, technically, Kale should not win the laning matchup against a Pantheon, but if he ints and dives you for absolutely no reason, well, yeah, then it is possible. My honest belief is this either creates too much confusion or is way too cookie cutter and instills terrible habits for new junglers who already full clear too much as it is and don't impact the map enough. Moving on from something I'm not super excited about, let's talk about something I love. There's a new ping system, now with options to ping for wave states like pushing and freezing, telling teammates to bait and all in, hold an area, and new options for vision. There's also an objective voter. In this example, the fire drake is coming up in 50 seconds, and the team is voting on whether or not they want to take or give. Of course, this doesn't mean that by voting your team is guaranteed to fight it, rather just communicating how many people want to, which is better than the current system of just spam pinging the timer and flooding the chat. This change is immaculate, and I mean this 100% seriously, this might be the greatest change they have ever made to this video game. Look how cool this is. You can ping area warded as soon as you see the enemy drop a ward, and it leaves a freaking placeholder with the timer. I have seen some players complain about this, and I'm here to tell you as honestly and as fairly as I possibly can, you're stupid. Yes offense. No, this is not babying players. This is not league on easy mode. This rewards proactive players. It rewards using good, proper pings, paying attention to the game, and communication. This is textbook definition of good game design. Thank you, Riot. Scuttle Crab now spawns at 3.30 instead of 3.15, and no longer has a shield that is either broken with CC or smite. There is now no longer any advantage whatsoever given to a jungler who has hard CC to clear the crab. We'll come back to this in a second. Smite now starts at 600 damage instead of 450, and no longer heals you. Again, we'll come back to this. Gromp no longer heals a large amount of health and mana based on how much you're missing. Instead, all of the camps will sustain you by just a little bit after taking them. Krugs now do not split as many times. This camp is now champion dependent on whether or not it's the slowest to take, rather than being by default slower than all other camps. After years of begging Riot to do this, Finally, the mini camps all have their health displayed on the health bar. This has long been a feature of the Chinese Wii client, and the visual clarity is a welcome change. Lastly, just based on my testing, you take more damage in this jungle than you do before, and a large reason for that is because you can now only afford one potion, and that's because the pets cost 450. Let's talk about the pets. Alright, the big one, pets and avatar smite. So what the heck is this even about? The new jungle system is the pets. These pets are essentially the jungle item that upgrade your smite and will give an additional bonus. Red smite, challenging smite, as you know it, is 100% removed from the game. Challenging smite where you would get a mini exhaust and the burn is gone from the game. All junglers, no matter the pet choice, will unlock the equivalent of blue smite, and this is now called primal smite. How do you get primal smite, aka blue smite? Well, on live, as you probably know, you just have to smite five times, and your item is then removed from your inventory. That has been totally reworked into the new pet system. At the start of the game, for 450 gold, you'll pick up one pet type that you want and one potion. Let's just call them the red pet, blue pet, and green pet. For roughly the first 20 minutes or so of the game, which pet that you chose has no impact. It's not like there's a red smite, a blue smite, and a green smite. Smite functionality across the board is completely the same for all the pets. Smite Tier 1 starts at 600 damage instead of 450, then upgrades to 900 damage and gives you the Primal aka Chilling Smite, and then upgrades into the Tier 3 Avatar Smite, giving you a 1200 damage smite that also AoEs camps. 
The way that you upgrade your smite is by making progress on your pet. The pet is there to help you jungle. It attacks camps with you. The jungle burn is completely removed in favor of having the pet do damage. Even if you don't have AoE, the pet will still help you AoE a little bit on Krugs and Wolves and Raptors. It's not such a high amount that Warwick now melts Raptors or anything, but it's better than on live without a doubt. The way pets upgrade is by farming the jungle, very similar to the way that the old Feral Flare or the old Sated Devourer worked. When you first buy the pet, it will have 40 stacks on it. And in order to get Primal Smite, you need to feed it 20 treats or 20 stacks, so halfway through. And then finally, after feeding it 40 treats or getting 40 stacks, you'll get your Avatar Tier 3 Smite. Clearing the regular jungle camps as well as Scuttle Crab gives you one treat each, but an epic monster like Dragon, Herald, and Baron will give you three treats. Now it might sound like it will take a very long time to get your avatar smite, you need to clear 40 camps, or I guess slightly less if you're able to get a couple of objectives, but in my rigorous testing, I was able to finish before Baron spawned relatively consistently. And the reason is that because at starting 2 minutes at 25 seconds, you will get one bonus treat, and that happens once per minute. These treats actually stack as well, so on your next camp clear, you'll get one bonus, and these stack once per minute, like I said. Let me put it like this. If you clear your full six jungle camps and finish at 3.30, instead of just getting six treats progress, you'll actually get eight, because at 2.25 and 3.25, the game gives you one stack for bonus treats. The typical time that I got Primal Smite was around 6 to 8 minutes and level 6 to 7, right around the typical time that you're getting on live to finish your Blue Smite, so that's pretty much the same. And then it depended for the Avatar Smite. Most of the time it's going to be 17 to 20 minutes, but in this one example where I was playing Graves, I farmed very well with very good cycling, I was actually able to finish before 15 minutes. Now we can finally discuss the difference between the pets, because the bonuses don't matter until you complete Avatar Smite. Once your pet is finished, they will give you the additional bonus. The blue pet gives you bonus movement speed in a bush very similar to Nidalee Passive, and gives you a larger burst of movement speed whenever you clear a camp. This is wildly fun on Nidalee and Hecarim, clearing that camp and sprinting towards a gank felt very powerful, but I'll come back to this in a second. The red pet gives you a sort of empowered red buff. It builds up similar to the energized system of rapid fire cannon and how you build up the turbo chem tank, but you stack it up quickly by killing jungle camps. Once you have 100 stacks, you will slow champions and hit them with a max HP burn. Currently, this stacks pretty slowly during a team fight when you're not actually hitting camps. I think the most amount of times that I was able to use it during one fight was maybe three times. The green pet is the tanky one. You stack up an out of combat permanent shield, similar to a Malphite or maybe Rakan passive, and just like the red pet, you will stack this almost instantly by clearing one camp. While you have the shield, and briefly after it's broken, you'll get some tenacity. The green pet seemed underwhelming to me at first, but after testing all three pets multiple times, I can honestly say none of them felt specifically broken or insane or overpowered. I would say that the shield is the most consistently useful and easiest to see its value, with the next best probably being the red pet, and as it currently stands on PBE only after day 1 and day 2 testing, unless you're playing Nidalee or Hecarim, I really don't think the blue pet was very good. Rotating and getting to plays faster is really nice but if you encounter the enemy jungler and they either have a shield or a big damaging slow, their fighting potential is just straight up superior to yours. There is now a visual indicator of the leash range and a reduction of the range as well. This is obviously meant to help people who are new to jungle understand just how far they can pull the camps, However, you really cannot pull the camps as far. It is quite drastic and double camping has been completely removed from the game. Well. Sort of. The jury is still out on every single champion whether or not you can actually double clear except for Fiddlesticks. I have at least seen one successful clear of double camping for Fiddlesticks, and it turns out his clear speed really hasn't been hit too badly at all. It's a very competitive clear at 259, which currently as it stands is the fastest clear I've seen in the new jungle. Other than him though, double camping has more or less been completely removed from the game, particularly the early game. But if you're practiced on something like a Graves or Hecarim, you can still utilize leash ranges decently well to help your clear speed, albeit to a lesser degree for sure. You can see in this example, yeah, I mean, I'm able to pull these things together, and I'm still able to sort of damage them both at the same time, but this is late game, so it doesn't really matter anyway. 
I am very mixed on this. The indicator is wonderful, the patient system is counterintuitive, it's clunky, and seriously takes a while to understand and master. Without a doubt, it's confusing for new junglers, so more visual clarity is always welcome. On the other hand, their statement about why they did this makes no sense. They said, if jungle clear optimization is no longer a major barrier to entry for jungle viability, way more champions can be played there. The meta is less set in stone, the jungle itself isn't telling you that you're bad at the game because you picked Warwick and wanted to take Raptors. Okay Riot, true, you're right, but what in the world does leash range have to do with Warwick struggling to take Raptors? <laughs> right, right, uh, are we playing the same game? Riot. On live, the reason that Warwick can't clear Raptors is because he has no AoE, not because he can't pull them. The reason is because there's 12 billion Raptors and 18 trillion Krugs to kill, and he has to hit them one at a time. Even in a world where you can't move the camps at all, Karthus' clear is still leaps and bound better than Warwick's for reasons that are so obvious it's not even worth explaining. Go ahead, try it yourself. Try your absolute hardest to make Warwick clear faster than a Karthus or Hecarim. You can't do it. I went on the current patch, playing on live, I stood completely still, using no leash mechanics whatsoever, and Karthus' clear is still 317. Warwick, on the other hand, is a 355 clear. Warwick's E is technically an AoE ability, but because the ability does zero damage at all, it does not apply the jungle burn. Simply just adding in the ability for Warwick's E to apply jungle burn, it would increase his clear speed by a factor of maybe 10, 15, even 20 potential seconds. None of that has anything to do with the patience range. None of that has anything to do with the leash range, and it certainly would not have required fully reworking jungle by adding in pets. Now that the pet helps you clear and does AoE and there's no more jungle burn, it's true that Warwick's clear does go a bit better, but in my opinion the reduction of the leash range just ended up making me angrier than it should have. Nidalee's clear still requires very good mechanics and understanding how the champion works, but for simple right click point and click junglers like Ramus, his clear is mechanically no different whatsoever. They did successfully normalize clears a little bit though. Warwick's is about 338, so nearly a 20 second reduction in his clear and nerfing fast junglers by about 5 to 10 seconds and making them less healthy. That's pretty okay and I'm actually fine with that change because the crab is now a 330 spawn instead of 315 which means that for most junglers with a good clear you're going to be able to full clear just fine and then fight crab at level 4. But something that is difficult to describe to you in this video unless you've actually tested the clears as much as I have is that the pet just feels... I don't know, awful and compared to the burn? It's because the burn is so visual, you can clearly see the animation, but the pet in this case just sometimes clips into the wall, it would hit the camps at inconsistent timers, and I found it frustratingly difficult to learn just how much health I leave on the camp while walking away. The key difference is that on live the burn mechanic has an exact amount. We know for a fact the burn starts at 60 damage and then scales with your stats and then stops burning them. But the pet however just continues to attack whatever either you're hitting or whatever is hitting you. So the pet does not finish off scuttle crab the way that the burn does since it doesn't hit you back, but technically you can leave a camp on a good amount of health and go afk and eventually the pet will finish it. Even after full clearing about 50 times in the new jungle, I still don't really know how to perfectly kite the way I could using the burn. One absolute treat, no pun intended, to the new jungle though, and cannot be understated, is how much better resetting a camp is now. Riot, you're genius, thank you. Like seriously, genuinely, thank you. Oh man, once I figured this out, I actually had a smile on my face. The camp resetting is no longer the end of your clear. If the camp resets, it's not GG. What you can do is follow it back into the leash range, and once the patience meter is flashing red, you have a window to re-engage the combat and deal damage to it. If you can do that, the camp will then only recover a small amount of HP, and you'll lose just a couple of seconds, rather than it fully resetting and making you want to alt F4. This change is A+. Alright, final thoughts. The biggest thing that confused me in this situation is why Riot didn't just embrace the patience mechanic by adding in the indicator like they did, but then keep the current range and have a proprietary tutorial or instructional video built into the client that teaches you about it, and have a practice tool scenario that lets you practice your clears more effectively. The reset game button is okay, but the problem is that the camp spawns get messed up and it doesn't bring the timer back to zero, so it's harder to tell how fast your clear actually was. 
This Reddit user had the great idea of something like save states, so you can more easily practice your clear for potentially just one quadrant. Maybe you only need to practice pulling together the blue and the gromp, but that's a little bit more annoying to do right now. I personally feel that the pet's damage adds to the confusion of clearing and does not make it a lower barrier to entry. The jungle meta itself will change with this update, obviously, and I think now cycling is the most important skill. Farming junglers have a very clear advantage, and ironically Riot, what you've pretty much done here is make it so champions with a slower clear are going to be even less meta than they are now. Think about this for a second. If Graves or Hecarim can complete their avatar smite before 20 minutes, have their empowered buffs, and gatekeep the enemy jungler from completing theirs by 20 by stealing all of their camps, objective securing is now a very real thing again. Remember back in the day when your level would determine how much your smite did? Well that Baron and Dragon secure mechanic is now back with avatar smite. Smite is not normalized to 900 damage permanently, so the team with the first avatar smite in pro play has a very clear advantage. I promise you, you will not see Warwick in pro play, because why in the world would his team wait for 5 extra minutes to complete Avatar Smite and have to give all those objectives when his smite does 300 less damage than Nidalee or Diana or Hecarim or Graves? Those are just my predictions and my thoughts. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you feel like I was too hard on Riot here, keep in mind this is PBE. It's all just predictive and there's a long way to go. I really truly believe that this system at least has some potential, but I don't currently like the functionality of how the pet helps you clear. And I do prefer the old way that jungle worked, but the pets are fun. They're interesting, and they definitely shake up the meta in a way that I was hoping for. I'm at least happy that the game is going to be different, because that truly is all I want. I want the game to feel fresh. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you're doing well and having a nice fall so far, and I'll see you guys next time.